Hey everyone, um, thanks for joining. Today I am speaking again with Sadia Hamid. Sadia is an activist for human rights and women's rights. And she, I was, I asked her to come on and talk about the grooming gangs in the UK and everything that's coming out about that right now. Hey Sadia, thanks for coming back. Hi, thank you for having me again, Abay. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, we, we just seem to be talking about like some really horrific topics here. The, the grooming gang scandal. Like I know... It started breaking a few years back, like BBC had done that documentary, The Three Girls, and I think Julie Bindle was the first person to speak about it in like 2006. Yeah. Um, uh, but now it's more and more is coming out and people are finally realizing like how big the scope of it was. Uh, yeah. So if you want to just give like a little background and we can go into it. So it's huge, actually. This is happening up and down the, the country. There's new reports coming out all of the time. Uh, and largely the perpetrators are Pakistani Muslim and Bangladeshis. Um, uh, so the, the demographic of the country, uh, it, so there's two kinds of uh, um, pedophiles. There's category one and there's category two. And uh, for those that are interested, uh, uh, the Quilliam report breaks this down quite well. So there's two categories of pedophiles. The, in category one, it's the, the kind of pedophile that will, um, you know, groom an individual child or a couple of children and works on their own. Nobody knows about it. It's all very secretive. Um, so in that category, the pedophiles uh, replicate the demographic the demographic of the paedophiles replica replicates the demographic of the country so for example if we have 90% of the country that's white British 90% of the paedophiles in that category are white British 2% uh, Pakistani and 2% of them are, uh, are, um, uh, are, are, are Pakistani in category 1 category 2 is a bit more uh, complicated so that is where um, uh, groups of men uh, have set up almost like a, a business of it, of going out, finding young girls, vulnerable young girls, grooming them, um, and uh, then sharing them amongst their friends. Uh, I, and even the police and social care and all those responsible for the care of these girls, they referred to them as prostitutes, child prostitutes. Now, how could a child choose to be a prostitute? She's been groomed into this. And the, the paedophiles in this category... So just to go back to the demographics before I move on, uh, the, uh, uh, the paedophiles in this category, they are, the Pakistanis are overrepresented in this. So 2% of the overall population of, of Britain is uh, Pakistani Muslim. Um, and in category two, 80, I think it's 84 or 86% of the paedophiles prosecuted are Pakistani. So, uh, and this has become such a hot topic, um, nobody wants to really talk about it because they're claiming that this is a far-right issue to even talk about it. So, you know, you, what you end up seeing is young girls that just, all they're doing is sharing their experience of, um, of having been raped by these, by these people girls. Um, and having to come out in their own defense immediately to say, but I'm not, I'm not a racist. I just, I hate all rapists and abusers and having to defend themselves against all. I mean, some of these, some of the people that they're having to defend themselves against are also academics. I, I, I can't believe that they've made a business out of um, basically bullying working class uh, and young girls and poor girls. And it's not, so the, 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 the interesting thing about this issue also is that it wasn't just, it wasn't just working class girls. They were overrepresented again. So the majority of the paedophiles in category two were Pakistani, uh, Pakistani Muslim. The majority of the victims and survivors are white working class girls. Um, but they also went after some brown girls as well. Because Within the brown community, where you have this kind of um, this honor related, where we, I mean, obey, think about when you were a kid. Yeah. If somebody said to you, when you were doing something that you weren't allowed to do according to your family, I'm going to tell your mum and dad, think about what that does to you. That's, yeah. that's worse than being raped, right? Yeah. So it was that easy for perverts and pedos within our community, whenever they saw a young girl both Muslim and non-Muslim, by the way, who um, was was doing what most young people do. They experiment. 
that's what normal young kids do experiment with their look experiment with you know their friends and uh new foods and all of that kind of stuff the kind of shit that young people do um that was when these pedophiles would hone in and go ah i know that brown girl isn't supposed to be doing that so i can go up to her and say get in my car or i'm i'm going to tell your mom and dad and the fear of our parents was worse than uh being raped i mean okay that was like one of the things i'm not because i mean i i sort of been following this just because it's horrible and like why isn't anyone doing anything about it? But like, I think like when Julie Bindle first spoke out about it, was it because they were, it was some Sikhs that had spoken out about their daughters being attacked? Like no one actually kind of paid attention until brown people came up, you know? That pissed me off as well, by the way. Yeah, yeah but I mean, okay. Uh, I, again, I, I, I look at some of the numbers and I see that like, you know, sometimes I see it's been going on since like the 80s. And when you said like oh, it's, it's run like a business, in some cases it was like a family business because they're talking about like generations that were doing this, and it's yeah. okay. I understand it. Okay, I shouldn't say I understand. I can kind of see it in the current climate, starting in about you know two thousand five, two thousand six, with like some of this anti-racism stuff, like the critical race theory and all that. I can see that mentality where. Well, this is colonial. We can't, you know, this 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 whole BS, like, whatever. The, the whole anti-racism stuff is BS. Um, but, like, in the 80s, like, why back then? Like, well, it was, like, there wasn't this politically correctness back then. There wasn't this, like, political correctness. There wasn't this, you know, critical race theory wasn't even really a thing. Um, mm-hmm. Like, is there any explanation for why it goes back so far or... I don't really understand why it goes back so far. It's interesting. There was a docudrama that was made in the UK called Three Girls. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen it. Yeah, you, you, yeah. yeah. I saw that. It's really good. So my neighbour, she, uh, my neighbour, she's one of my best friends. She's sixty-seven now. And when that came out, we watched it together separately um, at the same time, mm-hmm. sort of thing. Um, and then I went to speak to her, I said, well, did you watch it? And we started talking about it. And she said to me, you know, Sadia, this was, they're talking about it now quite rightly as a crime, but actually this was normal life for us back then. Um, and she's 67, so it's been going on for a really, really, really long time. And I think actually what we have to do is go back to back to source, back to Pakistan. What is happening, because this is happening in Pakistan as well, look at the countless reports coming out of the pedos out there that not just rape, violently rape little girls, and then they kill them. Um, This this is is also coming out from from Pakistan as well. So we we have to figure out what's happening there because they're bringing that shit here. That's what's happening. They're bringing that rotten, disgusting, putrid mindset to the UK, to wherever they're going with them. And and I think the the the, the issue is that we're we're not even willing to have a normal discussion about but about it with the the, the all quite obvious not paedophiles you know, the non-pedos in the community as well. Because what we have is members of the community, when we try and talk about this, to say, look, we, we, you know this is happening in our community. I know this is happening in our community. Let's at least have a fucking chat about it. What they don't want to do, uh, what they don't want to do is engage with us. Instead, they start pointing fingers, calling us racist, calling us bigots, because by even suggesting that this is happening in the community, they... Um, they intentionally manipulate that into you're saying that all Muslims or Pakistanis are pedos, which nobody has said. And I think when when that happens now, I instantly, and this, this is going to probably make me sound quite wrong, but I instantly now think, who are you hiding? Why are you hiding this? Why don't you want to have this discussion? Why don't you want to help your community do better? Why don't you want to prevent this shit from happening within your community, within our communities? Because we're all supposed to be living quite comfortably together now, and we're not, you know. For some members of our community, there is a pool of people that they think, a pool of girls that they think that they can go in and abuse. And I'm not for one second convinced that those same pedos aren't going back home and treating their families like shit. So we need to start having this conversation, but I, I find those people that prevent that conversation doubly dangerous than the than the 
heroes that are doing it because effectively they're they're the ones ensuring that nobody comes after them and stops them okay like uh, uh, from the from the community side that's one mm-hmm. thing and it, it's kind of understandable and it like to me like with the, with the pakistani community or the south asian community in the uk it's been there long enough that they should have established some sort of foothold like i mean i have family and stuff there and the communities are pretty large that mm-hmm. they shouldn't be so you know so closed off but like i can understand it with immigrant communities they you know kind of keep to themselves don't want to speak to the outsider but then the social workers the police you know the like the healthcare staff you know mps being fired like the the pressure from okay i can understand not that i agree with it or condone it but i can understand that immigrant mentality of just stick to ourselves keep it amongst ourselves right i can get that but the other side of it the authorities like how do they like you know like that, that documentary, Three Girls, watching that and reading anything about it. And uh, I, I forget her name. Uh, uh, she's got white hair now. Uh, uh, she was Happy one of the people. Yeah, her. Like, like, you know, you listen to her. I mean, she was trying to speak out about it. And there was another one, Sarah Champion, I think her name was. Yeah, yeah Sarah Champion was a Labour MP. So it's interesting. Um, uh, some people have placed this... Um, uh, unwillingness to do something a- around the um, so it was after the the Lawrence um, Stephen Lawrence mm. case and the inquiry into that what they found was that uh, um, British institutions were institutionally racist so therefore um, that that kind of instilled in people in professionals a fear of doing anything in relation to uh, BME communities for fear of being called racist, which to me actually sounds more racist. Don't go and just arrest a black person or a brown person for the, for for being brown. But when they do something wrong, for fuck's sake, do your job. Yeah, that's that's uh, uh, okay. That that attitude, like I, I was just reading excerpts of this book last night because I saw it on Twitter. Um, acting white. The book's called Acting White, and there's a chapter saying acting like Obama. Right. Okay. So tell me about this book. I haven't heard about this book. Uh, it just came out. Sorry. Yeah. This is getting off topic, but it's it, it's this it's this kind of mentality that you know you you have to act brown or black or you have to act colored, right? And so yeah. it's the same pervasive mentality as this. Like if you go after you know if a person of color does something wrong and you go try to do you know arrest them or whatever, you know. Mm-hmm they did it wrong because of racism and you're arresting them because of racism and it's nothing to do with it look yeah. if because uh, I, I, I do speak to professionals in various capacities you know social care police mm. health all of those kinds of the all of those kinds of arenas and i say to them look you've got two things as professionals that are governing your practices just mm. two things nothing more nothing less right there's the law you use the law and that's it and you use the safeguarding or confidential or all the internal policies that an organization has that crops them up and guides the principles and you know p- uh, policies that a professional should be working according to those are the two things that you should be interested in and i tell you what if you're if you're speaking uh, it, in terms of um because c- i, I, I I'm talking in terms of honor crimes. If you're talking for the rights of a person of color, you're not going to do that because you're a racist, are you? You're not actually going to give a shit. You're just going to go, well, she's having she's having the crap kicked out of her. Is going to get forced into marriage because she's darky. I'll just leave them to it. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. You wouldn't do that if you're a racist. So, actually, um, I think professionals just need to get better at using. The, the structures that they have and acting within that provided that they're that they're doing that then they can't be they, ca- they can't go after them they can always just go look this is what my job says so that's one thing this is what the law says that's another thing what's your problem mate what have i fucking done wrong and actually quite a lot of the whistleblowers because maggie oliver was one whistleblower but there was um there was a a group of them that eventually started being and i was I was watching something about that yesterday um they all they went after them oddly the police themselves the institutions Mm. themselves 
went after them because what the institutions now do better than anything else is protect themselves. They don't want to protect anybody else. If they spent that money that they spend trying to fuck over the whistleblowers to do their job, mm-hmm. they'd be in a much, much better position. There wouldn't be scandal after scandal after scandal. They need to start just doing their job and using the laws that they have to, in order to do that. Yeah. But, uh, okay, like, I can see, like, groups like, um, uh, what's that horrible group I keep hearing about, Tell Mama or whatever, and, like, you know, Tell Mama UK. Oh, yeah. okay, I, yeah. I could see them creating problems for um, police because, okay, let's say you go in and you arrest 20 guys in the community, right? 20 Pakistani or Bangladeshi men. I could see a group like that creating problems, but, like, this fear of being called racist like i, I don't understand that like I, I'm, I'm really sure like you know like you know like yeah those young girls are probably really happy that the police weren't racist right like i mean like you know come on there there's there's worse things in the world like when 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 have, when have adults started fearing you know being afraid of being called a word yeah exactly and also look a lot of these girls uh, themselves, bless them, are having to now say, look, we weren't racist. We, w- these men, these brown men had convinced us that they were our boyfriends. If we were racist, we wouldn't have even entertained that. We would have told them to fuck the fuck off. We didn't do that because we're not racist. And the problem is, actually, those... The, I mean, the BNP were one of the groups that actually took this issue up. The reason the fucking BNP took the issue up was because the Labour Party weren't taking it up. Who have a responsibility? The Tory Party weren't taking it up. Nobody in government was willing to touch this issue. So they left it to the far right. And the BNP are actually the far right of this country. uh, if, if, If now... It's become too hot to fucking handle. It's because of the shitty institutions of this country that it has now become too hot to handle because the politicians that have a responsibility to hold our institutions to account and make sure that they're doing their jobs weren't willing to do that for these young girls. So what they did was open these doors up for, for, um, for genuine racists to, to take that issue on. And it was interesting, I was reading one girl's account, bless her, she was saying that um, my dad, for a short while, did actually join the BMP. He came to his senses eventually, but there was nobody else listening to him. Yeah. You know, nobody wanted to do anything about this. So where, did he, where would he go? No, but, okay, look, if I was a father and this had happened to like you know, my daughter, I, I'd probably be in prison for murder right now. Like, on, like, you know, if, if I saw that, like, you know, the inaction from the police, the government, you know, social services, whatever, like, I, I, I would take action in my own hands. And I, you know, I'd probably be in prison for murder because I'm sorry, like, that, that, if that was my kid and I saw that happen, like, there's just no way I could sit by and, you know, yes, I trust the government first, I trust the authorities, you know, go to the police, you trust something's going to happen. But, again, like... It's this okay. You're, you're oh well. These are white working class girls, and so and these are brown men. So whatever. For some reason, they're you know these white working class girls are better off than these brown men. So we'll let the brown men get away with it. It's it's kind of like to me. It seems like you're you know you're, it's you're giving them retribution for the British Empire or something. Like it's 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 like getting over past guilt or something weird like that. And the thing is, I mean, I've said this before and I'm going to say it again, that I, I, I live actually in a part of this country where I know people were being sent to India from. Mm-hmm. And I tell you what, those people that were making those decisions, I've never in my entire life interacted with them, neither will I ever interact with them mm-hmm. because they're from a different socioeconomic background. Their class is completely different to mine. And also... Um, so the, the, the crucial thing to remember, even when we're talking about foreign policy today in present times, 
the the people of those countries aren't making those decisions. The fucking the, the fucking morons that think that every white person is responsible that ha- for everything that the British or the Americans do. do. Yeah. Those citizens in those countries, including me, by the way, because yeah. I'm born and raised in this country, yeah. or that everybody in Pakistan is responsible for what you know Pakistan is doing uh, it, on an international scale. Same with Saudi. Quite frankly, is a fucking moron. I have nothing decent to say about those people because they're unthinking fuckwits, honestly. Yeah. But the, and the thing is, with the other thing that people do forget, most of these kind of woke bellends, is that what what the British uh, were doing with in their in their colonies abroad, they were fine tuning on white working class people in this country. The working class community of this country were known as the blacks of Britain by those that run run this country. So uh, really, they don't actually understand that that this this separating out of white working class people from brown people, and they don't even mention the class discussion up there when it comes to brown people, is fucking moronic. They've done so much harm to this issue, it's unreal. But but also, one of the reasons I got involved in this, quite frankly, was because what I saw was the same excuses being made for for honour crimes, forced marriages, as I saw for, for child sexual exploitation and the grooming gangs, we're not going to deal with the perpetrators, the, the grooming perpetrators, or the honor crimes perpetrators, because we don't want to incite racism or you know any kind of bigotry towards any community. Um, that was my issue. The, this, this, I saw the same behavior from the authorities when it came to both issues. Um, yeah. I mean, okay, that goes on in Canada. There's, uh, there's not as much. There was two cases, I think, two years ago that are off the top of my head, and both involved refugees. Uh, one was Afghani. I'm trying to remember where the other one was from. One molested a little boy in a public swimming pool. Um, one raped a woman. I think the rape person, like the, I think the guy charged with rape got one year because of cultural differences. And then the the one with the little boy, I think, got... I, I, okay. This is from a couple of years ago, so I'm, I might be getting some of the details wrong, but like they both got off with almost nothing. Um, and I mean, I don't, I mean, I know you know her, Yasmin Muhammad, uh, you know, like her case, you know, she was told straight out like, oh, well, because you're brown, we're not going to do anything when she went to complain about her stepfather beating her, right? Uh, and I mean, the one I think it sticks out most of my head because it was just so bizarre and it was a judge in Germany in 2014 to a Moroccan woman who went for a divorce because her husband was beating her and the female judge said well you married a Muslim man you know what you were getting into we can't and she didn't grant the divorce uh, luckily the judge was taken off the bench six months later and it was overturned but she had to go live with her abuser for six months so like this mentality of that's just your culture like yeah. I know you I know you do some work with that like the one law for all and all that like we have a set of laws and they should apply equally across the board and ig- ignorance of the law should not be an excuse. I mean, you know, oh, well, I didn't know I could touch a little boy in a swimming pool because, you know, there's the, the butchy buzzy in Afghanistan, right? Yeah, well, I'm sorry. It's just... <laughs> and they know they shouldn't be doing it because they yeah. wouldn't be doing it behind closed doors if yeah. they, they, they knew they shouldn't be doing it, right? Yeah. There's There's been that excuse here as well with the grooming gangs. With, I mean, I heard one uh, excuse uh, uh, that the reason for these groomers and these paedophiles is poverty and I was like do you know what get fucked there's lots of poor people in this country yeah. do you know what they don't do they don't go off and start fiddling children because they're poor there's lots of poor people in this country they don't go and blow themselves up because they're poor shut yeah. up with that bullshit it doesn't wash with me it's not not okay if something's not right let's yeah. work towards making it better for for yeah. you but don't go and harm people because your life isn't great. Lots of people are struggling right now. Lots and lots of people. It's not a good enough excuse. And actually, those those perpetrators that make the excuse, I actually, the, I, there's a whole group of people that I find, find worse than, than them. Those that excuse them or try and deflect from the mm. fact of the matter, I actually find them worse because 
fair enough. You want to want to do that. Do that in your own time. Let us deal with the perpetrators for fir- first of all, because actually what they're doing is creating more victims um, by not letting us do our jobs. Those of us that want to just get on with it and put the victims front and center. Yeah, but okay. Again, I don't see how, especially now that this is all this information is coming out. More and more people are hearing about it. And, like, I mean, it's been petering out since about 2006. It's, like, when I say petering out, I mean, like, the, the information's been slowly coming out since 2006. Um, I, this is not going to help, like, racism problems. It's not going to help, uh, you know, social cohesion. It's not going to help any of these things. Because, I mean, frankly, again, I, you know, if I started seeing this and I was a British citizen, I, I'd vote for tougher immigration policies. I'd vote for you know, harsher sanctions. Uh, you're you're sowing, you're you're setting up, you're setting up for, you know, race warfare. You're setting up for well, why does that why does that person get this and I don't? And yeah. you know, and it's I, I, honestly I don't know where like I'm I'm, I'm reading a lot of the like we would, like I mentioned before like the, the the critical race theory. Be reading a lot of this stuff, just trying to figure out, like, where the hell is your headspace? Like, where does this come from? Exactly. And to be honest, right, my my problem is that nobody's asking the perpetrators. Everybody asks those, they ask the victims, they mm-hmm. ask those other people for the victim, they ask those that want to have a discussion about what's happening within their community. They, nobody ever fucking turns to these perpetrators and goes, are you not worried that you're going to encourage racism? Why have you not, why have you been behaving this way? Because you are making it harder for people of colour in this country. You, the paedophiles, the perpetrators, the criminals, not the victims, not the survivors, not those of us that want to talk about these issues and deal with them honestly and and, and straightforwardly. And nobody, quite honestly, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm disgusted by those people that point the finger at victims or point the finger at people that want to, to, to deal with these issues rather than the people that are actually committing these offences. We had like a sort of a dishonest version of this recently as well with the deportation of um, Jamaicans uh, recently. Now, sadly, the ins and outs of all of their cases haven't come out. All the or, or the BBC interviewed somebody recently and all it said uh, in the report was that he had committed a violent offence and that's it. No details about the offence. But if you look at just, look at, Again, I'm going back to case, uh, you know, get, going back to the law itself, yeah. what it's says in, in the books itself. Now, if somebody has committed a, an offence and their immigration uh, uh, hasn't been approved, their visas haven't been approved, uh, or their immigration is, uh, st- status is uncertain, mm. they they are going to get deported. I've had cases where mm. that's happened as well. And yes, like, I, the, you know... <laughs> is painful to see people being deported particularly if they've got homes and lives here but go back to the law go back to what 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 we've what we've got there and because we're not uh, and because um because these 50 Jamaicans had been deported there was absolute outcry yet there have actually been lots and lots of white um immigrants that have been deported as well not a single peep actually in the thousand in comparison not a single peep from those same activists so it's interesting how these things are developing at the moment to, to become quite dishonest there's a lot of um uh, there's a lot of race baiting going on yeah. intentionally at the moment uh, and it's cr- creating a really really I think that's creating the true hostile environment in this country, actually, those that are continuously race baiting yeah. and and deflecting from the proper issues onto on uh, onto you know these kind of pretend issues a lot of the time. Yeah, okay. I saw the stats yesterday because I, I mean the, the stuff comes out and it's like you know fifty people being out. Know, it's, it's like they, they like I don't I'm not don't know the whole history of Windrush, but then other people are saying okay, well here's how many Romanians here was here running polls here's uh but yeah so like you know no one's saying about that. But then yesterday also another story came out. But this Serbian guy who'd been living in the UK from when he was a child, yeah. and then they sent him a letter saying it's the wrong address, you know, government efficiency, <laughs> that yeah. saying that his his you know his passport was no longer valid and he didn't know it. And it's okay. I see it in the states. I, I I've seen it happen in Canada a couple of times where people who've been here for 
you know, 20 years, they've got a life. And on some technicality, like there was one where a man left because his mother was dying. I, I, I don't know where, like somewhere in Europe, he comes back, but he'd, be, he'd never gotten citizenship. He was still, a, it's, well, it's called a landed immigrant. It's like your permanent status. And he left for more than six months, so it was revoked. And they wouldn't let him back in. And he's got a wife and family and a business and a house. Okay. Let's focus on, like, that's egregious. That's yeah. wrong. Yeah. But I'm sorry. I don't want people who, you know, I'm not talking about jaywalking or shoplifting. But if you committed a violent crime or you, you robbed a bank, whatever, anything like that, yeah, get the hell out. You know? Yeah. I agree, actually, because, um, you know, for example, uh, the BBC did something else recently, which I found quite shocking, actually. <laughs> there, there was a, a, a news report about how, uh, talking about how European migrants actually, they, they say that they face a lot le less racism than they than people claim they do, and they're, they're actually living quite happily here. Um, uh, and they interviewed, uh, I think he was, I, th oh, I don't know. I don't want to say it was a European migrant, and he he said, you know, I'm really happy here. I love it. Um, and then they inter interviewed a Bangladeshi guy who they they in their report said was a registered sex offender, and I was really shocked. And he was saying, you know, I've been treated really unfairly, and you know, they 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 they're not giving me my status, etc. And I thought, but you're a sex offender. Yeah. You, you want us to you want us to fight for your right to be here as a sex offender when we, we I don't understand I don't I, I couldn't I couldn't actually understand how the BBC could justify having interviewed him of all people I mean there's some people that I know have been in the country and have had a really really tough time and deserve to be here and then there's other people that I think no no if, if, if you're violent or if you're a threat to young people I actually think that there's 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 those there's those parts of the law that I think absolutely use them. Um, sorry. Yeah, absolutely use use those laws. And if you have a problem, I the thing I say, the thing I think activists need to bear in mind is if you have a problem with the law, they'd fight for legal reform. But it's going to be very difficult to reform something like that. So with with your friend that you were talking about, that's quite unfair actually, and that's. Mm -hmm an awful situation but I, it, I imagine eventually it'll be rectified actually um, excuse me with a violent offender or with somebody who's dishonest mm. about their offending history that too you know the the, the home office for instance here actually have a record um, of your of your criminal history mm. if they find if they find stuff out that sorry they they ask for a record of your criminal history if mm. you haven't declared stuff that you've done it shows that you're dishonest yeah. Then, then they're gonna, then they're gonna, they can, they're gonna think that other things that you have mentioned in your claim are false as well. Well, as a, as an, if you take away the institution, just think of it on a personal level. If somebody was in your life and you found out that they'd lied about something, all of a sudden you start doubting other parts of them. So institutions are gonna work in the same way if you're honest about it. Yeah. I and okay. Again, it's. You know, if you're coming in as a, you know, if, if you're getting immigration, and I know you're talking about violent crimes and stuff, right? Uh, you know, you, you forgot to mention that you like, you know, you nicked a pack of gum when you were 15. I don't think they're going to care. <laughs> Completely different scale, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, like, okay, again, like, I, I didn't see that BBC report, but I just don't even see how the, the reporter would even go about it. Like, oh, we're, we're speaking to a, you know, a self-professed sex offender who's concerned about his immigration status. Like, like, I, I, they didn't frame it like that. They, but they slipped into the report that he he was a sex offender. He was on. He was a registered sex offender. And I thought, well, I'm not. I, I'm not very happy about that. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. just not very happy about that. Um, yeah. So, I think a degree of honesty needs to return to this conversation. Actually, and we just need to be able to say things how they are. Now, returning back to the the grooming, the grooming, the grooming gangs, and the issue of race. Um, look, if somebody is running around town. Uh, with a knife or a gun mm -hmm. and they're still out there and they're a threat to your family, a threat to your loved ones, are you just going to want like a kind of a generic description that gives you no information or are you going to want to know well, how tall he is, what race he is, um, how how big he is, 
you know, descriptive information, or you're just going to want to know, he's got a black top on and a black pair of jeans, there you go. Yeah. That's what to look out for. Because then you could find, like, 50 men out there and with that exactly that same description. Yeah. But it's 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 everything. Like, it's you don't want to describe the, the perpetrators. Yeah. Um, okay, well, first of all, is you don't even want to disclose the crime, right? Let's keep that under the... Oh, we don't want to explain it. We don't want to describe the... Well, once once we know the perpetrators, oh, it's because of systemic racism that they did this. And I, I, you know, like, I'm sorry, like, you know, I've been called packy. I've been called towelhead. That has yeah. not given me the urge to go molest little girls. Like, I'm... No, <laughs> no like, frankly, it hasn't done me either. I'm not going <laughs> to blow anybody up and I've not <laughs> wanted to, you know, start going <laughs> fiddling people's children. Absolutely not. And also... <laughs> When somebody upsets you, you want, you want to deal with that person, right? A normal, sane, rational person wants to deal with that person or ignore it. That's the two two natural responses, right? I don't understand. That person over there at that time did something to me. So do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go and rape the kids over here. I don't understand that. That's not a good enough excuse. Yeah. Uh, hasn't well, I don't... It's, it's, so, sorry. sorry. No, I was just gonna say it's it's the it's the thing from uh, like the biblical thing or the Abrahamic thing, right? The sins of the father will be visited on the sons to the nth generation. It's it's all it is. It's you're paying for the sins of the father. Yeah, okay. Talk about the horrors of the British Empire. What it did. We can talk about. It. There's plenty wrong there, right? Um, uh, but then you look at Hong Kong, and they're holding up the Union flag. Why? And if it wasn't for colonialism, they wouldn't even know about those rights because they'd still be under the heel of China. So yeah. there, I think, overall, the balance is good because they brought some good ideas in. But, you know. I just go. think there's a level of dishonesty now with a lot of people that they're not willing to honestly talk about um, these issues without um, this kind of, you know, verbal gymnastics. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think also... We talk a lot about racism towards color, mm-hmm. communities of color. Actually, these these crimes by the Pakistani men mm-hmm. were absolutely motivated by racism. Now, Obed, you, you're from a similar background to me. Mm-hmm. You know some of the stuff that's said oh. in our head, right? Oh, God, yeah. Fuck me. I've heard so many times um, Pakistanis in my house, in the family home that I've grown up with, in the the extended family that I've grown up with, you can have sex with or, or do whatever you want with as many white girls as you want. In our house, you will only marry one of our girls. So what that does is it puts our women, our women up mm. here, their women down here. With me, it was things like, uh, and, and, okay, and my parents, my dad was a very, very open person. And like, you know, same with my mom, my friend... But you would, it was just little things that they, you know, them growing up, oh, these people here, they don't know how to do this. These people. It's always, you know, it's always like framed, it, like, you know, it's always couched in the thing of these people. And, and I, I keep harping back to this of when I was younger and my grandfather to discipline me when I was being, was misbehaving would threaten me with, oh, we'll marry you off to the black woman down the road if you don't stop misbehaving. Wow. <laughs> and... <laughs> And, you know, like, it's like, yeah, that's racism. And it's, oh, you know, there was a there was a video, and I don't like these videos. I'm getting really sick of these people sh- sharing these videos of, of private citizens, right? Even though, like, she shared it herself or a friend shared it. It was at the University of Virginia, you know, college student, say, 1920 maybe. She gets up in a public space in the university and says, I need all you white people to leave here. I just saw that. Yeah, it's pretty and, disgusting. Uh, I mean, that's racism. I'm sorry that yeah. you know, racism is not prejudice plus power. <laughs> racism is just plain old simple. I don't like the color of your skin. Yeah. I don't like you. Yeah, um, exactly, exactly. And that, uh, I, the tables are turned. Like mm-hmm. the fact that people of color can get up and be that openly racist and get away with it. <laughs> no, no white person could do that anymore. And rightly so, you don't want white people doing it, but no. I don't want brown people doing it either. No. Look, I've actually found this in quite a lot of communities recently, communities that I thought were quite decent. Mm-hmm. And I've been disgusted by their behavior and that some of the things that they've been saying recently, because, um, 
I I left my community because they were bigoted, because they had deeply misogynistic, racist, intolerant mindsets. Um, and to find that in the com communities that I'm interacting with, you can't go away from that community. I find that disgusting. But actually, I find I also find this kind of, um, you know, the guilty white people. Oh, that, good Lord. Oh, uh, shut the fuck up. I just yeah. don't want to hear it. If you yeah. feel guilty, deal with it in your own house. You yeah. know, the way to deal with that guilt is make sure you treat everybody the way that you would treat your kids. Yep. You know, that's the standard. Use, uh, make sure the law is applied fairly. Make sure the policies are applied fairly. Don't be shutting white people up and pushing brown people forward because you think that's how you deal with your your guilt your white guilt because actually all that does is creates more racism because then there's going to be a new group of white people who go hold on a minute what the fuck yeah and Why like okay I, I keep i keep saying about these people like they can't see the victims for the brown people right they and it's just but did you see that thing in the the guardian i think it was in the guardian um twenty five hundred dollars a night white women are paying you have to read White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo. You cook dinner, you invite these people over, and for $2,500, they come and berate you and tell you how fragile you are and tell you about your privilege. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and they're, pay yeah, they're paying for this. They're, they're reading a book, they're cooking the dinner, and they're inviting these people over to tell them how bad they are. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I tell, yeah, I, I said, I, okay, it's, it's, it's a very small group of people who are doing this, but still, like, I'll do it for a thousand. You know, I'll, 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 undercut, I'll undercut the prices. Look. <laughs> I tell you what, though. Like it, it, yeah, Andrew Doyle was talking about. Um, I still can't see whether um, Andrew Doyle was talking about. Um, he created Titania McGrath. Yeah. Um, he was saying they don't think like this, and I know that because I, I, although yes, I do work in London, I also, um, I also have, I live outside of London, so I interact with a whole load of quite normal, sane people. Um, oh, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, I can see you again. Um, yeah, so um, the, he was saying that this woke mentality that the, the the wokeitarians are actually quite small in number, but they've got a huge amount of power. Social media isn't real life. Yeah. It really isn't. A lot of my friends outside of London, they don't really do social media a great deal. It's quite abnormal where I live. Um, excuse me, to take your phone out and start you know, doing phone stuff when you're with your friends here, it's actually yeah. considered quite rude. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I'm, on the one hand, although they're infuriating and exhausting and just, uh, quite frankly, boring and uninteresting, it's so funny when you hear them starting to talk and they think they've got something interesting to contribute or something new to contribute, and I'm like, oh, just... It just shut the fuck up. There's yeah. nothing interesting here. There's nothing useful here. It's just hot air coming out of a, a useless orifice in your face. Um, so, uh, but what's heartening is that I know this isn't this isn't what a lot of normal people think. You know, th this is a completely different group of people. They are small in number because of how loud they are. It sounds like there's a lot of them, but in reality, it's not a big group. That you know, media, um, uh, academia, and uh, and social media, they're actually not a huge. They they look and sound, huge. they feel loud, but they're not. Okay, I I agree with that, but with one caveat. Okay, like it is in schools, so academia. Top to bottom, I should say top to bottom. These fields are taking over the administration, not actually the professorship, right? So it's the administration that's being affected, and they run policy. Um, yeah. Journalism, you know, when the New York Times can print an article about four black women being beaten up by two Indian boys, and then saying that's the fault of white supremacy. <laughs> okay, that's a New York Times. <laughs> um, uh, uh, 
okay. Um, when during Hanukkah there was a spate of I think every Hanukkah night Jews got attacked and synagogues got attacked. And the last night it was one of these black Israeli guys. And again they said this is white supremacy pitting blacks against Jews. And it's the New York Times. Now you have stuff like that. The Canadian government has created a ministry of diversity, inclusion, and youth. And part of the thing of the ministry is to set up an anti-racism secretariat, specifically black anti-racism, um, even though anti-Semitism is the largest hate crime in Canada. Uh, yeah. And part of their thing is to make sure every government, every ministry uses gender-based analysis plus for all their policies. So intersectionality will be part of the Canadian government. Washington okay. states, the Washington state's done this. Uh, 16 states in the U.S., K through 12, they're teaching this. The Seattle maths, the maths curriculum in Seattle schools is ethnically, ethnically based math, math. So how math is racially, how math is racially charged. And that's how they're teaching math from K through 12. So, sorry, what? Seattle, Seattle school district. I uh, heard, I'll just, um, I'll, I'll send you the link. I'll, I'll, I'll send you the link of, yeah. I'll send you the link of how they're teaching maths in Seattle. I used to really like maths when I was at school. Um, uh, I, I did maths after school as well because uh, I didn't get any fucking GCSEs, but that was a whole different story. But, um, yeah, uh, uh, I actually quite liked maths. I did it in higher education um, afterwards because because exactly that, that it was as simple as there's a right answer, there's a wrong answer, there's a wrong answer. That was it. It was that simple. There was actually no identity politics in it. There was no discussion of fucking sociology or you know um, intersectionality or any wokeitarian spackness. I just don't. Oh, or, or, uh, and now it's now it's things like uh, why are statistics racist? So if you're doing crime statistics and there's more crime in urban areas, well then statistics is racist, right? Oh. I, I, that's not a way to teach maths. And again, this is K through 12. They're teaching this to kids from K through 12. Like my worry about this is like, okay, you mentioned Quilliam, so they do the uh, you know anti-radicalism stuff. If you go yeah. back to like, like I think back to the 80s, the late 80s, when the the gangs in the states, the Crips and the Bloods, and then you had a lot of like white supremacist groups. The FBI and the police and all these people would talk about our news program. Oh, you know, they target kids who are disenfranchised. They target kids who are lonely. They target kids who are, you know, blah, 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 blah. If you teach this to kids, K through 12, you're creating a generation of disenfranchised, pissed off kids. You're, you have a smorgasbord for the extremists to pick from. Of course. Um, of look, course. I, 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 I'd love to sit here and talk with you because I know you said you got to go. Um, yeah. I'm so, just going to read it. Very yeah. quickly, I just want to add one thing. Look, um, I, I, I'm concerned about what you've just told me because actually one of the things that in any debate, in any argument, what I like to say to people is go back to source. If you have a problem with me personally, and I know there's this moronic mindset amongst a lot of activists that um, you know, if, if, you, if the person's the person you're debating with, if their politics aren't exactly on point with you, then you shouldn't agree with anything that, that they say. I'm like, fine, if you're that kind of moron, don't listen to me. I'll tell you uh, what I, what my position is. I'll tell you my sources. Don't engage with me. You don't want to engage with me. You're not capable or, uh, or sophisticated or adult enough to engage with me. Don't. Go back to the data yourself and make your own conclusion from that. Now, if if you have in maps and statistics uh, in you know statistical analysis and uh, and all of that this discussion of racism coming into that as well then quite frankly we are fucked oh yeah no we're screwed I mean, there, there's a i think it's brett weinstein who came up with it uh he, he called the idea he called it idea laundry he said like mm -hmm. you come up with an idea it goes through scholarship it gets you know oh we've got a book we've got this book we can go back to it so bad ideas have come into the academy and he called it idea laundering, and it's perfectly like that. Um, listen, like, like I said, I know you got to go. So if you want to let people know where they can find you, and then I'll put the links in the description. Yeah, so I'm on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, 
uh, my Twitter handle is Sadia936, uh, and that's usually the best way of getting in touch with me unless I get banned again. Uh, and then, oh, yeah, that's right. You, you serve four months of a 14-day ban? I know. It's mental. It's mental because, uh, you know, I'm not convinced that women don't have penises. So, uh, hey, hey, that's well, a conversation uh, for another time. Yeah. <laughs> right, well, thanks again, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll post this out in a couple of weeks. And, or, sorry, I'll post it out in a few days. And thanks, everyone, for listening.